Okay, we're back. Okay, so we're going to place this this coffin bone in here. We can get it in there, right? Okay, I want you to notice something. If you can see it, I might have to get a flashlight. Okay, just a second here. Kind of dark. But right down in here, you're going to see a space. You're going to see a space in between. Let's get it over there so you can see it. And I'll shine a light on it. Okay, see this dark space right here? Okay, that was all filled up with soul corium. Now, let's get this. Let's get our lighting technician over here. Try and get get the light in on it. Ah, there you go. You can see that little um, V-shaped, U-shaped space right in there. Do you see it? That is all filled up with soul corium. That's how thick the soul corium is. And it surrounds the entire foot. And that's why... <clears throat> okay, well, here's another way to see it. A second here. Okay. Let's look right here. See the space. The space. That is filled with soul corium. And that's why I tell you that, you know, the, the, the coffin bone, the whole foot itself sits in a little dish here of sole. Now, I over I over trimmed this dead foot. If this would have been his live foot, I wouldn't have trimmed it like this. But when I was getting ready to do the dissection and stuff, I wanted to clean up the sole real good, and I was messing around with mapping, and I really wasn't doing... <clears throat> uh, I, you know, I just wasn't thinking, and I took off too much sole there. You wouldn't want to take off that much sole in a real trim um, and uh, I like I ground the foot clear back to where the coffin bone line line was you can see my grind marks here which in a regular trim okay uh, first of all there would have been more foot here and my breakover line would have been more like about here and I, because see this horse had a very tight connection he didn't have any flaring in the toe he had a nice steep toe angle so, you know, I would not have trimmed the foot like this on the live horse. But when I was doing the dissection, I just got a little carried away. Okay, but that's also shown me some things. Now, you know, in the other anatomy videos that I talk about the anatomy, I talk about how the sole corium, okay, there's a lip of sole corium, around the exterior of the foot here and it also extends out like this and that's what fills up this little gap in here and that's quite a gap you know that's quite a bit of sole corium and so <clears throat> it was very thick like a gel pad like a Dr. Scholl's gel pad okay and the way it grows you can see how it creates a lip of sole that the whole foot sits in like so. Okay, what else do we want to talk about? Well, that was something. Okay, another thing. <clears throat> now that I've got these feet here. Now, the, this is the hoof capsule off of Cat Dancer. And what you're seeing here is lamina. You are seeing the same thing here, this stuff right here, as you are seeing right here. And when a horse gets laminitis, and this can happen mechanically, it doesn't have to be due to grass or anything like that. That can aggravate the problem, that's for sure. But this can happen mechanically through simple leverages on the hoof that are distorting the hoof that people don't recognize. And, uh, okay, so you see the difference here. Look at, look at that there. Now that is how... That is how the wall should run down the wall of the coffin bone. That's how it should grow from the coronary band right here and just be tightly, well, just like my fingernail is connected to my finger there. That's how it should be. All the way around the hoof here. Okay, but when a horse gets laminitis, um, 
and it, as I said it can be due to mechanical reasons okay this same lamina here that attaches into the lamina here it remember it interlocks like that okay this same lamina can become stretched now cat dancers foot is a little different on most laminatic feet what you see is a very long stretched out toe this way okay like that and what happens is these lamina can reproduce and stretch to where you have this look at that look at how wide they can be how wide are those let's measure those okay her lamina stretched to at least let's see this kind of cruddy ruler here da, 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 da. oh my a good inch okay a good inch of stretched lamina leaves they were still holding on to the foot here now this isn't of course this horse's coffin bone but what happened was um, the foot got I'll tell you what happened to cat dancer okay okay right here I want you to look at um, that where the hairline would have been now let's let's look at this as an example now now here is Toby's notice how the hairline goes goes down like this okay here is cat dancers notice how the hairline goes straight across okay notice the difference in the amount of wall in the amount of wall on these two horses and the difference in um, the amount of heel buttress here all this area here is heel buttress notice the difference okay now <clears throat> here's something else notice the difference in the bars now look at Toby's bar his his bars were real real low or well collateral grooves notice the difference in the collateral grooves right there okay this would be the inside of the hoof capsule where this collateral groove here goes up and of course the bar is attached back here to the cartilage not to the coffin bone but notice how low that is right there and if you remember on the hoof anatomy video um, when this was still fresh I, I showed how this right here that's covered with frog material is real soft so that when the bottom of the foot here of the coffin bone in here is sitting on it okay it's it's kind of cushioned under here right here